No power. Camera. Anyhow, so I got the uh, body mounts back in. Four of them I ended up replacing. Uh, the biggest pain was actually getting the back portion here lined back up and into place and sealed back down. Kind of how it was. But uh, I think what we're going to do is sand the top of the cab here and prime it with some primer. And uh, maybe get some white paint and paint it. We got to pop some dents out on it also, which I don't know if I'm going to do that now or later. We'll decide later on. But uh, basically I get those parts in and I had roughly one 12 hour period to get it before thunderstorms came and I didn't really want rain leaking in here so I just hammered it down at night and got it all put back together. Painted this thing that was all rusty and everything else. Um, I don't have the seats in here yet. There is a reason I want to uh, paint this bottom with a bed liner paint and then we might add some more carpet on the top if we can find it. If not, it's no big deal because we'll have the bed liner paint. Also, there's some engine work that probably needs to be taken care of. I think a couple oil leaks. I don't know if I'm going to put that on there now or later. But it's a lot easier to work on it with no uh, chairs in here. So, we'll decide on that one too. I might have to put a chair in here to move it. Um, let's see. Uh, same thing with the uh, bed platform. i got to make some holes and make that where I can attach that and get it up here and weld it in place and attach the skin on from this side or figure out a way to haul it up there and leave it attached although it'll make it harder to paint a lot of surfaces so I might see if they have the bed liner down the street at the local O'Reilly's or not um, we'll decide here on that in a bit I know I haven't really talked too much about this, um, stuff in here Really, I just sat down and welded this one up overnight. One day I just sat down and did it. It's primed, it's ready. I just have to decide on my attachment method. I was going to run some um, rib nuts through here and make space on this piece for the rib nuts and run the bolts down so I can put this one up and then install this one later. The biggest thing is I got to figure out what I'm going to do about the roof of the ambulance, what color, if I'm going to paint it, if I'm not going to paint it and where to go on that and I'm, I kind of <laughs> I needed this flip a coin on the decision because there's there's pros and cons to both but right now we're not really moving forward either because of that but yeah and all truth I can't even work on that side thing right now because I don't have the space because it's in the way so let's let's put some holes in this and just get it up there we'll figure out how to paint it later we have to, we can roll it on or paint it or brush it on or however we gotta do it. Um, and we'll go ahead and prep the top of that and get that top of the ambulance ready to go. That's probably our best bet in all truth of it. It's not perfect, it's not great, but it would get us going, moving farther forward if we got this up. And it, it doesn't really matter. It does matter if the paint job's bad on this, but it really doesn't matter in the long run of it. It's just, I would have liked to spray it on, but I think I could probably brush it on and it'll be just fine. It's probably not going to be exposed to too much uh, wear and tear because of where it's located, and I can decide on how to paint it later on. So, the quickest method is to pre-drill a couple holes here. I already have the backside marked out. Go ahead, get these. And which I need to come off about two inches because I have a uh, two inch angle that's going to go in here to the cab that I'm going to use to help stiffen it up and tie everything in together. So if I come down two inches, drop a hole here, drop a hole here, that gives me an alignment hole for whenever I kind of throw it back up there together. The original plan was to rivet all this in place all the way around what would be the cab where I can't get a rivet gun into and then slide it up there and kind of pull this back to the rivet point, not creasing it, slide it in there and get it going. And that still might be the actual good plan to go with. I just need to put some uh, cloth or maybe even some of this insulation over the top of the forklift forks to get up in there and slide it and get the angle in there because once I get this up there I'm not taking it down. Now I was toying with the idea of dropping some rib nuts on the skin here and rib nutting or dropping a screw from here and running a hole all the way down to the bottom 
and running up and pulling up in there and that would probably take a lot more work it's not necessarily a bad idea it's actually a pretty good idea but the alignment and the fact that I'd get the rib nuts straight and square in there and everything perfect is uh, well as I found on that it's really hard to get everything straight and perfect when you don't have a drill press hooked up which I do have a drill press I could do it all with a drill press but this is getting unwieldy the best thing for me to do is actually just get this riveted on get it up there and call it good and worry about the paint later I think that's what we're going to do today we'll see here Rainy days don't seem so wet Stormy nights don't stay From the moment that we met You're worth the wait Oh, this could be the best thing that I'll ever know Talk for hours and never slept Two silhouettes on the concrete steps We watched the sun as it slowly crept From the horizon to the place we met Oh, oh I come in here to get away from the wind and I'm right back in it because there's a giant hole in it Anyhow, I'm still waiting for the paint to show up. I'm trying to figure out what all I can do while I'm waiting for that paint to come up. I think, well, I'm not going to tell you what I think I'm going to do because last time I did that, I ended up doing completely opposite of what I was doing. So, hopefully y'all enjoyed that last live stream and uh, got some information out of it that you needed. Um, sorry for the uh, couple days it was pulled down. I kind of wanted to get the resolve of the situation before um, anything I said was made to make life harder than it needed to be. So it will, it's probably up by now anyhow, at least by the time you guys are seeing it, not by the time I'm recording it. Anyhow, I'm hoping that wind noise is not coming through on that, but there's a good possibility it is because I don't have the muff on. Anyhow, I think... I will work on taking some more of the vinyl siding off with aircraft stripper, which means I need to go get a respirator on and start watching paint dry. <laughs> Literally watching paint dry. Anyhow, mm, yeah, that's probably good. I could also work on the the actual uh, floor and through the subfloor area because I got this over here figured out. Uh, the water tank and the height of the insulation and everything else and I could very easily pull that measurement off and start making me my floors and subfloor area and I think I'm going to do it all out of aluminum because wood's so expensive at this point I might as well use aluminum which aluminum is expensive too it's just I save a lot more weight by using aluminum I already have the skills for welding it and it wouldn't take that long to do a couple uh, cross braces and yeah, the I am gonna use wood in some key spots where I want to isolate the heat transfer. So I have a little space for the wood on some of this, and it'd be so much easier just to run a single two by four. But two by fours are expensive now. I really didn't have the budget for a ten dollar. I mean, it's three times as much literally. And thank goodness I got the metal before it went high. I got it all back in December, but I'm probably going to have to get a little bit more. So, that is what it is. It'll come down, I'm sure, eventually, but I don't know how many years I'll have to wait. Anyhow, so... That looks really good now. And I feel better knowing that that's there. I also got to clean the floorboard because I'm going to paint out 
also paint it. So I gotta prep it and then get it ready for paint and get some other stuff and paint some of these surfaces that I just plan on painting. And go from there. And I might put the marker label. No, no. I don't know. I'll wait and decide on the rear. It might. I gotta paint. I gotta do some paint prep and some other stuff. So there's a lot of little stuff that needs to do. None of which I really want to do. But yeah, we'll get there. So it'll bring you in on a time lapse while I remove all this stuff with the aircraft paint, which I'm gonna be fully geared up. So let's get that going. in today it's a Raptor Light product it's tintable the only complaint is the gun doesn't come with a little quick connect thing but I think I have a pack of quick connects around here that I can use um, the tan the color and it's a uh, desert tan pretty sure that's the color and then black uh, camo smoke black I figure it's the closest thing I can get to a black that I can consistently get across the board. And I might add white in there somewhere too. Because those are the two colors. And this is the tintable base coat. And there's some hardener in here you add to it. So we're going to get back together building this out. I got to, um, well, I got this marked out on the corners here and a spot down there. So I'm only going to paint the area just above the the cab area um, black I think that's the best thing so I can get this painted get that the cab area painted and then we can get this up there and weld it into place the main reason I'm not going all the way to the edge for one I want to run a trim piece along there I don't know where that's going to go I don't know if I want to paint it or not for two, it gives a, a little bit of heat dissipation for whenever I start welding it up there to the paint so it doesn't like cook it off. So yeah, and then yeah, I'm gonna have to move the ambulance too, and I gotta pull off the angle piece and get it primed and ready and prepped, prepped, primed and ready, and going up. So 
I'm gonna get this drilled. The problem is, what I've been running into is, I want it to not have bolts hanging from the top or rivets hanging from the top and hanging down. So I want it to look like it's attached from the bottom. And the only way I can do that with what I'm trying to do is pre-rivet this area here and probably pre-rivet out to a certain point probably about here. That way I can bend the middle under and get it in there and then weld it all up and then rivet from the outside. Uh, the spots that I can rivet. And so what I'm going to do right now is pull this off there for one. My air mask. New air mask. Pre-drill here and here all the way through. Once I have the pre-drill, it's kind of my alignment. Annoying, isn't it? And then I'm going to come back here and I got it stenciled out where all the lines are and I'll measure it out and drop a bunch of drills in that and then I'll stick it back up here, line it back up, and then drill it from this side and rivet it. I was going to try to do a reverse hand rib nut in there and screw it into the back side, but that's some more work than I really want to do. And I don't really want to take it off once I'm done. Um, all I have to do is just get everything done in the order right to get up there. Um, so I'm going to pre-drill a couple spots where I'm going to put some rivets later on. And then I'm going to pull it off of the sheet and mark it and drill it from the back side. Once that's done, we will put it back up there and put these two rivets back in and finish drilling out from the pre drill side and drilling it into the frame there. And then we'll proceed to rivet back up and sand, prime, paint. I got all the holes pre-drilled. I got to pre-drill them into the 
the back piece here. You gotta drill them in here and drill them all through there. Then I'm gonna run through some rivets and rivet it all up, sand it, prime those, and just clamping that down should give me enough thing to slide up in there sideways. You see this mark here? I'm not gonna mark here because that's gonna be where that piece of angle attaches. I'm gonna go down, all the way down to about this little dot here, and back over this way and up, and that's what's gonna be painted on this until later. That's the area I can't access very easily with the paint. It should give me a, a good effect. And I might just come in here and just mask off all that, but I think that's a good starting point for it all. And I'll have to wait until tomorrow to put it up um, because it has to dry on there and everything else and dry up there. I'm going to finish doing the prep up there also. But yeah. I also got to sand off the top of these heads a little bit so the paint will stick to the heads also. And I read it should cover at least up to a quarter of an inch. And I'm preparing to do this whole area. I'm hoping I'll do it in one can. If not, I have two. Basically, it comes in uh, gallon kits, like a gallon, $100 or something like that, or with the spray gun. Now that I got the spray gun on, you have to worry about that. I'll uh, acetone it out once I'm done with it. So, yeah, I also got to clean up these little burrs on the top here, which I'll do with the sandpaper here real quick. Yeah, I think it's going to look good. It's uh, a lot of rivets up in there, but I want it coming off. And, yeah, it will be fine. The biggest thing is going to be a stretch for this one here, because I'm probably going to end up attaching that here. I'll have to mark that and everything else. Maybe I'll just drill through the top down. Who knows? All right. Yeah, yeah. Go and play that. Set you down, I'ma say that. Money me a couple dollars. Telling you now this payback. Huh. So I'll take that. Ask them now, we'll say that. I've been going to the top and I got what they not, so I know that they hate that. Uh, but I'm on now. All these lanes gonna zone out. And all these lanes gonna take what I did and they twist and they worse till I fall out. Uh, but I know that. So I keep what I'm doing cause I own that. And I stay in the lab and I kill everything, but I don't ever move. I'm a code at. So don't. I'm gone. Find me back in my home. Okay, take a break for a little while. Do you see the gap in here? And I'm to explain this gap and why I put this in there. This is that Kills Matt Sound Engine insulation. It's also butyl tape, or double as says butyl tape. That basically, um, let's see, let me get a better angle on this side. Basically, the reason I put it in there is one, to kill noise that vibrates through the system. As I'm going down the road, I'll put some more on the back side. But the other thing is, there's a um, possibility I may build a skylight over the bed, an opening skylight, and if I ever get water in, I'm a way for the water to drain through and drain out of the cab. So if I put this space in there, you can see air gaps there, and it gives the water a place to drain out, should I ever need to. And I'll continue the theme all the way out here once I get welded up. I just can't run it all the way out until... Uh, the welding is done because it'll probably melt it and make a horrible smell and everything else. So, yeah, so. And I probably won't seal the bottom that good. I'll probably leave gaps there to let air in and out or water in and out. And that way, if I ever have rain or moisture come into the rig, yeah, it would suck to mess up my air mattress or foam mattress, but it gives it a place to go versus putting the weight entirely on the rig. It also keeps the rot down a lot more. Not to mention, everything that's in my insulation is not going to rot anyhow. So, you know, I get all the the things in. All I got to do is cramp them down and call them good for now. Sand them, prime them, mask it, paint it. Do that five times five. Sand them, prime them, mask it, paint it. Prime them, mask it, paint it. Okay, so, yeah, that's what we're doing. Cause I'm back in my zone now Back in my zone now Alright, all prepped and ready to go. We got it taped off. We're just doing the top 
top and we're doing the uh, we're doing this one here I get the edges paint off this should give me enough overlap here I was gonna just go around the top but it should be fine if we do it now the biggest concern is is I'm not sure if the paint will flake off whenever I move it like this so we'll find out but I gotta leave enough so I can get it into shape and slide up there it'll have to harden for a couple days first too then I'll have to come in and finish pre-drilling all these holes and then riveting it down that should do it and as long as it holds together up to this point and doesn't flake off there it'll be fine if it does we'll deal with that when we have to deal with it and then we'll peel this off and it'll give me the edges for I have four inches of overlap which will be on the front underneath where the other sheet butts up. This one will have the two inch two by two over it. So I'll have a little overlap there. And it's a two inch by two inch so and that one I'm gonna paint which is this one right here it's gonna get painted everything but probably the edges because I need to weld it in place probably. So that won't get all the way painted which I should tape that now that I'm thinking about it. And then over here I'll have a, a little overlap here that I'll will paint. Um, with a different color or maybe I'll just overlap it, but it'll give me a decent seal um, But everything looks pretty good. It's dried pretty nicely Now lucky for me. I found a, uh, a little thing that I can screw It did not come with a threaded or quick disconnect on it. Well, I don't know why it's probably because it saves a little prices so basically I need to get my cleaning solution ready and once the cleaning solution is ready, I will mix the black which is smoke black camo and of course the tan that I have for later it won't go on this time I'm hoping I can do it with a half a gallon I don't see a problem where I couldn't so I have two of them and then I got the hardener in here which is this so I mix the tent and then I mix the hardener it shows you mix it together but I'm gonna do the tent first and then the hardener pour it in there and then we will be spraying I gotta do a couple test pieces real quick and go from there. So the hardener is not clear. It's actually white, which is surprising. I think it's just concentrated and it looks white. But I found that interesting. It is a U-Pole product base tint or tintable base coat. And the black is a camo black and it just looks black inside it and the hardener is actually clear and they say you have to mix the uh, well I took it as you mix the color then the hardener in there together it's 30 or 8 ounces I believe of hardener to one quart of product and the spray gun can be adjusted they recommend anywhere from like 25 up to 65 and on the bottom I did about 70 and on the top of the cab I did about 80 and it gives it a lot finer texture with 80 it doesn't have to be so rough so I like that
Through the last of my thoughts Standing on the edge of my time 